They listen before talking about vaccination. The sun over Ghana's capital city of Accra broiled Nitu Abad as she sat in the back of a taxi with no air conditioning for an hour. Then something made her realize how much she could rely on her CDC colleague, Liz Wilhelm. I didn't have enough money with me to pay the fare, and the driver didn't want to let me out to go get more, Nitu says. I was half a mile from our hotel, and I messaged Liz that I was melting in the cab. Five minutes later, she was running down the road to give me money. Bonding moments like this have turned these two into a tight-knit team. Together, Liz and Nitu travel around the world and throughout the United States to encourage vaccination, and they face similar hurdles wherever they go. Liz is a health communicator, and Nitu is a behavioral scientist. They've worked together since 2016 for CDC's Global Immunization Division on vaccination campaigns for polio, measles rubella, cholera, and more. When COVID-19 struck, the two of them led the vaccine confidence and demand team for CDC's COVID-19 response in the U.S. As they travel, Liz and Nitu collaborate with public health partners, healthcare providers, and people who need vaccines to research why some people are not getting vaccinated, despite the ample vaccine supplies. The two use the findings to help partners develop strategies to get more people vaccinated. Nitu and Liz have many stories to tell from places as diverse as Nigeria, Indonesia, and Alabama. But they have found everywhere that listening to what other people say makes the difference in helping people decide to get vaccinated. We listen to people we serve to keep from making assumptions. We may assume, for example, that if we give people clear messages They'll make the choice to get vaccinated, Liz says. But have they even gotten your information yet about vaccines? Liz and Nitu often discover that many people haven't received answers to their questions. And everywhere, the two hear similar reasons for not getting vaccinated. Often it's not vaccine hesitancy an unwillingness to get vaccinated. We can use the word hesitant too quickly. Sometimes the reason is not being able to get time off from work or to find someone to watch your children. You may not have access to a health care provider you trust to answer your questions about vaccines, Liz says. In 2017, when Liz and Nitu promoted the measles vaccine confidence in Ghana. Healthcare providers there spoke of being unaware that children needed more than one vaccination dose. The healthcare providers didn't know what to do when parents brought their older children in for a second dose. Mothers spoke of hour-long trips down treacherous roads to take their children to a clinic. Some had thought about staying home and skipping the second dose. Other times, vaccine hesitancy does play a role, especially when it's boosted by misinformation and fear posted on social media. Rumors on different chat apps have damaged Liz and Nitu's efforts in the measles rubella campaigns 
in both India and Indonesia. In the U.S., floods of information have collided with misinformation, leaving some people confused and hesitant to get vaccinated against COVID-19. In Sumter County, Alabama, Liz saw a long line of people waiting outside a funeral home where many were making funeral arrangements for loved ones who had died from COVID-19. There, a woman selling catfish from a food truck said that she would get her mother vaccinated, but from what she had heard about the vaccines, she decided not to get one for herself. We explain the science to help people get to know vaccines so they're less afraid of them. With mRNA vaccines, we help people see that this is a technology upgrade in healthcare. Some people are hesitant to get a COVID-19 vaccine because they feel that the public health and healthcare system have failed them before and could again. Sometimes it has to do with barriers to healthcare that are rooted within racial discrimination. People have asked why we were there for COVID-19 vaccines, but not for other healthcare issues that they have faced. And every single person we talked to in communities suffering heavily in the pandemic had lost a family member to COVID or become sick themselves, Liz says. Community and religious leaders have helped Liz and Nitu build the trust that people need to feel more confident about vaccines. I sat with imams in Northwest Nigeria who used Quran verses to help worshipers understand the importance of protecting yourself, your children, and your neighbors, Nitu says. And in April 2021, she sat with pastors in Albany, Georgia, who held funerals for people who died from COVID-19. The pastors wanted to know how to get their congregations to trust in science. One pastor had a radio station and put us on air. He asked simple questions about mRNA vaccines. He told us that our answers made things very understandable. The show may have reached more people who needed our information than if we talked to a major TV network. Nitu and Liss are taking what they've learned in the U.S. back to their global immunization division to get more people vaccinated against COVID-19 all around the world. People are experts in their own lives and they want to be heard. If you start there, you may find a solution, like informing healthcare providers or getting vaccines closer to where people live.